in chapter 3, we're going to focus on differentiation, starting with section 3.1, which is the derivative and the tangent line problem. Calculus grew out of four major problems that European mathematicians were working out during the 17th century. And this is just kind of formally where the, the invention of calculus kind of gets historically credited. Um, independently, aspects and ideas of it have been you know, found all over the world, from Indian to Chinese, uh, even going back to as old as some of the ancient uh, Greek ideas. But the fundamental beginning of calculus, as is typically noted by a lot of historians, uh, began with work on what's called the tangent line problem, velocity and acceleration, the idea of trying to locate minima and maxima, as well as finding the area of irregular shapes. One of the things that we've already kind of slightly investigated uh, when we did our preview of calculus was the idea of looking for a tangent line to a curve at a point. So here's a couple examples of what we would look at if we had different tangent lines. The basic idea is that locally near the point, the line should touch the graph in exactly one point. And roughly speaking, if you zoom in, the slope of the graph or the slope of the function at that point should be equal to the slope of its of its tangent line. Okay. In essence, to find the tangent line, what we're going to start with is the secant line, and then we're going to look at the limit as the second point moves towards the first point. Okay. So let's suppose that we have um, two points on the graph. Suppose we have this point C comma F of C. And this is the point at which we want to find the, the slope of the tangent line. We think about from our old school slope formula, m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. In order to use this formula, we need to have two points. So what we're going to do is as follows. We're going to add a little bit to our initial x value of c. And that little bit we're going to call delta x. If we take this new x value, as it may be, and plug it into the function, that's going to give us the height of this thing, which will be represented by the function value at c plus delta x. This original height was f of c. And now what we've created is a second point that's on the graph. Because of that, we'll be able to calculate the slope of the secant line using our y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 formula, and that gives us the following slope of the secant line. In simplified form, it's f of c plus delta x minus f of c, all divided by delta x. And this expression here is what we refer to as the, the difference quotient. It gives us the slope of the secant line from x equals to c to x equals to c plus delta x. Um, it can also be kind of thought of as an average rate of change as well. What we notice is that if we let delta x go to 0, so as delta x goes to 0, this second point will approach the first point. And you can kind of see this, that these secant lines get closer and closer and closer, so much so that in the limit, this actually will give us the slope of the tangent line. Okay. So in, in many ways, this process... The idea of how we end up with getting the slope of the tangent line is the fundamental idea in all of calculus. You say to yourself, okay, I want this new object, but I don't have a, a formula or a way of computing it. So you said, ask yourself the question, well, what am I able to do? What kind of things can I do? And the answer is, well, we can find the slope between two points. You do that, and then as we pass through the limit, that'll give us the uh, new object that we want, in this case, the slope of the, the tangent line. So this is a definition for us. If f is defined on an open interval containing c, and if the limit of this difference quotient exists, let's call it the limit equal to m, then the line passing through c comma f of c with a slope of m is t the tangent line to the graph of f at the point c comma f of c. The slope of the tangent line of the graph of f at this point is also called the slope of the graph at f. So we can define slope of a curve simply to be the slope of its tangent line at that point. Okay. 
Let's take a look at example one. We want to find the slope of the graph of f of x equals 2x minus 3 when c equals to 2. So let's go ahead and, and write this out. So first of all, the definition of slope of a function at a point is it's going to be the limit as delta x approaches to 0 of f of, excuse me, c, we're calling it right now, f of c plus delta x minus f of c all divided by delta x. And in example one, we're looking for this particular slope at the point c equals to 2. So I can actually kind of go in here and we can plug in c equals to 2 because that's going to be the value we're looking for it at. So this would be 2 plus delta x minus f of 2 all divided by delta x. When we worked with the difference quotient previously, we said the thing to kind of keep in mind when you're focusing on this is we have two function evaluations in the numerator. And in the denominator, we simply have that, that delta x. Let's come over here off to the side and let's calculate some of these quantities. And we'll start, first of all, with the f of 2 plus delta x. So everywhere I see the expression for x in our function f, we're going to replace it with 2 plus delta x. So that should look like this. And now let's kind of go ahead and, and simplify it. This will be 4 plus 2 delta x minus 3. And if we combine like terms, that's going to give us 1 plus 2 delta x. So m is going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches to 0 of, here's my first part. That's going to be the f of 2 plus delta x. I'll put the f of 2 here. And simply, the, the delta x is always going to be in the denominator when we start. We came up with 1 plus 2 delta x for that part. We also need to find f of 2. So I need to plug 2 into this function. f of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 3 which will be 4 minus 3, which should be equal to, to 1. So that function value is going to go here. So my advice, especially when you first start to work through these, take your time. Go nice and easy with it. Make sure you get everything set up into the, the right spots. And I especially find it helpful whether you use brackets or parentheses. Use grouping symbols in the numerator because this will help, and especially if you look back, It'll help you to identify which the first part was, which is the f of c plus delta x part, and then which piece of it was the f of c part. Now that we're here, let's see if we can find this limit. We can begin by going ahead and combining some like terms in the numerator. We have 1 plus 2 delta x minus 1, all divided by delta x. Notice that the, the 1's will cancel, so this will positive 1, and that negative 1 cancel. So this will leave us with m equals the limit as delta x approaches to 0 of 2 delta x divided by delta x. And now we notice that the delta x's will cancel, so this cancels. So this is going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches to 0 of just a constant. And from our limit rules from the previous section, this is just going to be the, the constant value 2. So the slope of the tangent line of this function at f of x equals 2x minus 3, it's going to have a slope of, of 2. We would also define simultaneously by definition, we would also say that the slope of the curve f of x at c equals to 2, that the function itself would have a slope of 2 there. It's just equal to the slope of its tangent line. One of the, the beautiful things that's nice about calculus is even though it's going to allow us to do some things that previously we weren't able to do, you all might recognize this function um, as one you covered probably extensively earlier in your math career. This is nothing more than a linear function. It's of the form mx plus b. And if we ask what is the slope of this line, 
Well, the answer is the slope is simply equal to, to 2, because that was the coefficient of x. Not coincidentally, whenever we did the derivative, the derivative also ends up telling us that the slope should be, should be 2. So it's kind of nice that with this one example, we kind of have some familiar, familiarity already, and the new calculus that we're kind of developing agrees with the old ideas and concepts we had previously. Let's take a look at another one. Let's find the slopes of the tangent lines to the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 1 at the points c, excuse me, at the point 0 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 2. Okay. So for this one, what we're going to do is something a little bit different, okay? Um, because we have a couple of different points we want here. This is um, 0 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 2. So instead of kind of going ahead and having to do two separate limits, let's just do the limit in general, leaving kind of the, the C in there. And then we can go back and plug in 0 for C to get the slope of the first point. And then we'll go in and plug C equals to negative 1 to get the slope of the second point. Okay. So we know that the slope at a point is going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches to 0 of f of c plus delta x minus f of c all divided by delta x. Let's kind of off to the side, let's kind of abstractly write these things out. The function is x squared plus 1. So if we want f of c plus delta x, this would be equal to c plus delta x squared plus 1. And we've got to be a little bit careful with our algebra, but this is squaring a binomial. Whenever you square a binomial, you need to take that expression and multiply it by itself. So we're going to have to distribute, or some students like to say, foil this thing out. We're going to get c squared plus c delta x plus another c delta x and then plus delta x times delta x, which would be delta x squared. So for this very first term, we can also combine these because these are like terms. So the f of c plus delta x, we have c squared plus essentially 2c delta x plus delta x squared plus 1. The other thing that we're going to need that's going to go in the numerator should be f of c. If I take c and evaluate the function at c, that would just be c squared plus 1. So c squared plus 1 goes into here. Again, take your time nice and neat. We want to make sure we get the difference quotient set up properly. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify and try to evaluate this thing. This would be the limit as delta x approaches to 0. I can remove the grouping symbols in the numerator by distributing that second, uh, excuse me, that negative sign through, we have c squared plus 2c delta x plus delta x squared plus 1 minus c squared minus 1, all divided by delta x. In doing so, we have some like terms that cancel, a positive c squared and a negative c squared cancel. We also have a positive 1 and a negative 1 that will cancel. So right now, here's what we're left with. We have the limit, if I can write limit, the limit as delta x goes to 0, and we have a 2c delta x plus delta x squared, all divided by delta x. And if we try to plug the delta x to 0 in right now, we would get 0 over 0. But if we look at the numerator, we see that delta x is a common factor so we should be able to go ahead and, and factor that out of the numerator. So if we factor out a delta x from up top, 
that is going to leave us with a 2c plus delta x, all divided by delta x. And now the delta x's will go ahead and, and cancel. And in general, whenever you're trying to find a, uh, a slope from the limit definition, you know you're going in the right direction if at some point you're actually able to get the original delta x that was in the bottom. Eventually that should cancel. And the moment that cancels, then you're ready to go ahead and, and find your limit. Okay. Also notice that as we're writing it, every single time we're going, until you actually plug in and evaluate delta x for zero, please make sure you're writing limit every single time. Here, this is going to be 2c plus zero. And so we find that the slope of the curve at the point c, x equals to c, it's given by 2c. So the slope of the curve is going to be 2c. So at, for example, 0 comma 1, when the c value is 0, that's the x coordinate, the slope would be 2 times 0, which is 0. And at negative 1 comma 2, here the x value is negative 1, the slope would be 2 times negative 1, which would be negative 2. So there's our, our answer to this one. The slope at 0, 1, the function has a slope of, of 0. And at c equals to negative 1, the slope, i.e. the slope of the tangent line, is negative 2. It's always kind of nice, especially if we have some way of kind of verifying this or trying to get some kind of intuition on this. If I do the graph of x squared plus 1, that's nothing more than our good old school uh, graph of x squared with a vertical shift up one unit. So it should look like, like this. If I can draw it. There we go. Not coincidentally, if you look at the ordered pair on this, so the ordered pair 0, 1 is right here. And the tangent line at that point, that's where the vertex is, would be a horizontal line. And we know that the slope of any horizontal line would have a, a slope of 0. That's exactly what we calculated and we got from our uh, limit of our difference quotient. If we were curious, what is the slope of the graph at the point negative 1, 2? Well, negative 1, 2 would be this point right here. And notice that if we draw the tangent line, the tangent line is going to look something like this, which would be a straight line that has a, a negative slope. Furthermore, the slope of that tangent line would be m equals to negative 2, which is what we got from our, our slope calculation. Okay. So it's always kind of nice, in my opinion, that especially with these examples, if you graph the function, you can kind of at least sketch um, up front to see what the tangent line looks like. And then that might give you some kind of anticipation as to what type of value to expect, um, whether it be like a negative slope, positive slope, or as the first one we saw, we had a uh, slope of zero from a, coming from a horizontal tangent line.